Hey everybody, it's Dustin here and we are going to, first thing, very first thing, lesson one, we're going to create a class. So I want you to look on your screen and find the three little lines up here in the corner. If you click on those three little lines, it'll bring up some things to do. I actually already have several classes already built, but I'm going to show you how to make your first class. So click on classes up at the very, very top, and it brings you to your class screen. Now again, like I said before, I have three classes that I've already created. One of them is that introduction to Google Classroom, and then another one is for computer science, there's another one for, for uh, middle school physical science. And so what I need to do now, if you want to create your own classroom, come up here to the plus button in the upper right hand corner. Click on that, and you'll see there's join class and create class. So as a teacher, you can take classes, but you can also create your own, and that's what we're going to be doing today, is you're going to create your first class. I suggest that you go ahead and just create one of your classes. So whatever your subject is, if you're a science teacher, like I was, then I would type in, let's say I'm going to do 8th grade, oops, not star asterisk, 8th grade science right so that's what I'm doing and maybe you have different class sections and that's fine you can have different sections if you want to I'm not gonna do that and we're gonna say that this is a physical science class that's what we're doing this one and my room number is 32 so I'm gonna use room 32 click create it takes a few seconds for this to go through and process And now I have my new class. Super easy. That's it. That's all you got to do to create a class. And so let's walk through a little bit and see what's on this screen. Um, up here, you've already clicked on this line here before. These three little lines up in the corner. That accesses your different classes. So this is the name of your, your current class. And then this gives you a list of all of your classes. So let's say you didn't just teach science, but you also taught math, or you also taught social studies. You could have all those different classes, and you can jump between the classes really easily. So if I wanted to go back into my introduction to Google Classroom, I would just click on this, and it brings up that class. If I wanted to go back to my new science class, I click on that, bam, I'm right there. So it's a real nice, quick way to get around to different classes. Across the top, you have four different categories here. One is stream. That is basically just a running list of assignments and announcements and things like that you've created off in the front. It's typically what the home screen is for students when they first get into your class. Um, classwork. Anytime you've created assignments, that's where you will not only um, see all the assignments created, but also you'll be able to create the assignments. Uh, people, these are the people that are in your class. So if you have multiple teachers teaching one class, and uh, in terms of the, while we're out for COVID-19, I strongly recommend that if you have other science teachers who teach the same subject that you do, why don't you co-teach it together? That way, if one person's unavailable, somebody else might be. And so you can add another teacher here um, just by clicking on invite teacher, type in their email, click invite, and you're all good. Um, students, you can add them individually, or you can also use this code right here. You can send this code out to students, and they will be able to register for your class. All right, and then lastly, of course, is grades. Um, if you assign, if you give them assignments, you can also have all the grades listed within here. It's pretty handy for both grading and for um, getting students' feedback. It's pretty, pretty nice. Okay. Uh, if we go back to stream, again, this is kind of your home page, if you will. I'm going to go through this a little bit more in depth. Here you have that class code again. And if you are in a classroom, right now that's not really the case for most of you, but if you're in a classroom, you can click this display button and it shows it nice and big. So if you're going to put it up on the projector, on the whiteboard, um, on the smart board or whatever, then you can have it so students can actually see it. Um, you can even go full screen if you uh, really want to make it big. All right, so we click out of that. That's the class code that allows students to get into your class. Over here you have select theme and upload photo. So for example, 
select theme if you wanted some you know if you're a language arts or ELA teacher or math and science I automatically pick this one up probably because I type I put science in the name of the course so probably did that automatically but let's say I actually wanted to have something different up here I could upload a photo and I just happen to have one on my desktop amazing and there you go. So I have a nice little volcano image here. You can move this box around to select what part of the image you want to have in there. You can make it bigger uh, or smaller, but it has to stay the same proportion so it fills up the whole side. So that looks good to me. So I'm going to select that theme. And now I've got this cool little volcano up there. Not necessary, but if you want to do it, you can. Okay, upcoming. This section right here tells you what assignments are coming up next. So what is kind of the order of assignments that are going to be needed to happen. So let's go over to my Google class for this for all of you and you'll notice you have an assignment in there due today. What? Due by tonight, midnight tonight, a little assignment on who are you and notice it's a link so you can click on that and it goes right into, for me as a teacher, it'll go right into the um, whoever has turned in their assignments and who hasn't, and then any grades that I've assigned to them. Uh, for you as a student, it should go in and show you the assignment and allow you to do it. And then here again, this is, you can add some posts or assignments. So if I just wanted to quickly share something, make sure you go outside and enjoy the sun I could do that and just make a little announcement I could post it I could also add something if I had a particular file that I wanted to attach to this announcement maybe it's a link to a website hey check out this cool resource uh, it could be a file from your computer or a YouTube video so you can also assign those this there click on post and now it is in my feed so it's in that stream there okay so that's the basics here then over on the far right you if you've used Google Docs before you probably know these three icons before because they are in all of your different accounts this one just shows your different accounts and you can manage it or get in and out of your different ones. These are your Google Apps, all the different apps you might may or may not have active going on. And then this is the one that I like. Let me go back to that again. This little gear icon, this is going to be important for your class because in here are all your class details. So you could add a description about your course. What is it all about if you wanted to? You can also edit the name. Maybe it's not 8th grade science, maybe it's 8th grade Earth science. Let me make sure I go in the right spot. Maybe it's eighth grade earth science, not actually just eighth grade science, but eighth grade earth science, because I have the volcano picture, right? And so you want to be able to change that name. Um, down here, you, this these are where it gets really important. Students can post and comment in the stream. You know, this is a dangerous thing right I usually as a teacher I usually only allow teachers to post and comment otherwise you're gonna get a lot of random stuff up there um, well maybe we'll play with that a little bit and see if we want to try it uh, with this particular with uh, with the group for the the Google classroom I do want that to happen but uh, you may or may not want to have that posted or, or turned on um, this is you can either hide notifications have them condensed or show all attachments and details I personally like to show all attachments and details because it's just all there in the stream then it depends on how much stuff you have in there it can get a little bit overwhelming sometimes um, I usually do not have the deleted items turned on and um, guardian sum summaries that's for parents and guardians if you want to have them have access to this they can also get these little email summaries that are sent to them and you can either have that turned on or turned off grading so how do you want to do grades do you want to do it by total points by category I usually personally do it by points but I know a lot of people like categories 
Um, and then do you want to show that to your students or not? Sure, why not? If I'm going to give them a grade, I'd like them to see it. Uh, but you may be using something different like Synergy to do your grades and therefore you don't want the assignments in Google Classroom to make it seem like they are, let's say, failing or getting an A when in reality they're not because there's a bunch of other assignments. That's up to you whether to use it. And then here, this is where you can add categories if that's what you want to do. Okay. Click on the little X here, or even better, click on the Save, since I did make changes. If you click on Save up in the upper right-hand corner, then now any changes that I made will be reflected in the course. Okay, so that's your introduction. This is lesson one. You should have, at this point, created a course. Uh, I want you to, if you need to, go back and watch the video again and uh, change the name, add a description, and uh, do any of those great things that you might want to be doing that I showed you. I also want you to complete the Who Are You assignment. So click on that and uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, how much experience you have with Google, what classes you teach, what uh, grades, subject area, all that stuff. And I look forward to your comments. Don't forget to uh, to send me a message if you have any questions, if you're having a hard time. Happy to help out. All right, everybody, I will see you in lesson two. Take care.